Today we're going to be replacing the alternator on a Lexus with a V6 engine. Now the first thing we're going to do is check the battery voltage and I'm reading 7.3 volts. It should be around 12 volts. Next up we're going to boost the car and start it up. So right now the battery voltage at idle is reading about 13.3 volts which is a little bit on the low side. It should be reading around 14 volts. Now we got a bunch of warning lights on the dashboard here telling me to check VSC and all that. Now we're going to load test the alternator so we're going to go over to the climate controls here and we're going to turn up that fan speed to high. Uh, then I'm going to turn on the uh, heated seats here all the way and I can turn on the radio and we're going to amp that up. Oh, you can see that already my GPS screen has already cut off. That's not good. I'm going to turn on my headlights as well as my high beams and I can already see the battery light has come on the dashboard. The voltage has now dropped to around 8 volts so the alternator cannot keep up with the load requirements of the car. Look at the headlight just blinking because the voltage is not right. And you can see the gauges are going all wonky so we definitely know something's up with the electrical system on the car. And finally we know the alternator is located down here. This is the pulley for it. I did hear a bit of a pulley noise coming from this area as well as a burning smell that I can smell right now after running the car for a few minutes. So we can conclude that this alternator needs replacement. Now before you start any electrical work first thing you should do is disconnect the battery terminals. So now in order to get to the alternator down here I'm going to first remove all of these plastic bits. So just to make my job easier, I'm going to remove the air intake shroud, the coolant reservoir, as well as the top off of this ECU. Yeah, I knew it was going to break. Now we can remove the air intake, the coolant jug, and the ECU lid. Alright, so with all the plastic out of the way, this here is your alternator. How? That's hot. And then we have the belt that goes around the alternator here. We've got an idler pulley over here that needs to be removed. And then at the bottom here we have the tensioner pulley that needs to be turned counterclockwise in order to loosen tension on this belt. Make sure you get a good look at how these belts go around each pulley so you don't want to put it back on. So I'm just going to put my 14 millimeter breaker bar on the tensioner, move it counterclockwise and then I can peel off the belt from the alternator. The next thing we need to do is remove this idler pulley. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. I'm just going to break it free and remove this idler. So here's a closer look at the front of the alternator. The next thing we're going to do is remove this 14 millimeter bolt up here and this one down here that hold the alternator to the engine block. And now I can spin off the bottom bolt here and that's the top bolt and that's the bottom bolt. You'll notice that it is shorter. So now that the easy part is done, the front half of the alternator is loose, we got to go over to the hard part which is the back half. Now if you trace this wire down to the alternator, you've got a rubber boot that covers the positive terminal that goes to the alternator. Now this whole thing is made complicated because you've got this AC line that's in the way. So you have to work your best around it because you don't want to disconnect it and have to recharge the AC. So I'm just going to reach down in there and pull back the rubber and that reveals this 10 millimeter bolt for the positive line. I'm going to go ahead and break that free. Mm. So I'm just going to come in with my magnet and grab that little nut. And then now I should be able to remove this positive wire off of the lug from the alternator. So next there's this electrical connector that needs to be removed. I'm just going to reach in there and pull off this electrical connector. Now this wiring harness on top of the alternator also connects to the alternator through a bracket. Now I'm going to remove that bracket by removing this 10 millimeter bolt at the side of the alternator here. You can see that I've got my ratcheting wrench on that bolt at the back there. And I'm just going to undo it. And then I'm going to remove the wiring harness away from the alternator and you can see this is the bracket here. And now for the hardest part of this job, there's a hidden bolt behind this alternator. So I'm going to take you down behind there. It's very difficult to see. So if we go down past the exhaust manifold has a stud at the top there. And we go down a little bit more, you see that there's a black bracket that goes off to the alternator on the left. That has a 10 millimeter bolt that we need to remove in order to free the alternator from the engine block. So here I've got my 12 millimeter socket onto that nut. You can see I've got an extension going on it and it goes down and in behind the exhaust manifold. I'm just going to go ahead and break it free. So finally using my brother's magnet I was able to get out that magical nut that holds that bracket on the back of the alternator. What a stupid design Toyota. Alright so with all the bolts free I'm going to remove the alternator from the block. I'm just going to give it a good tug. So once the alternator is loose from its bracket, I push it down and then I can push it forward. So right now we have the alternator loose, but this wire here is blocking the way because I actually run it down below. It should have been run around it and it's pulling tight on the AC compressor line down below. So I'm going to have to push this back in and run the wire up at the top. 
Okay, so starting with the wiring harness on top of the alternator, I'm going to push down on the alternator. And now I can reach in and pull out the old alternator. Just feed it around the AC line here. And there you go. Whew, that was a lot of work, man. If we look inside of the hole here above the AC compressor, you can see this here is the stud that that hidden nut was attached to. And that there is the stud for the exhaust manifold. Now this means that you have to move the alternator towards the driver's side of the vehicle before you can pull it out to get it off of that stud. Now this here is the old alternator compared to the remanufactured one. The old one is probably the original. It's made from Denso. And it's got this bracket on it where that hidden nut was attached to. I need to transfer this bracket over to my rebuilt one, which is from Remy. Now I've got the bracket and the stud transferred over from the old alternator. I'm going to go ahead and install the new alternator in the car. So I need to catch the stud at the back and then I can lift the alternator up into place like that. Now this new alternator fits a bit loose compared to the old one. So I'm just going to thread in the large bolt on this side over here just to keep things together. In order for me to not lose this 12 millimeter nut, I'm going to tape it to the socket just like that so that when I thread it on, it'll pull it away, the tape will break away and this doesn't drop down in behind the engine. So you can see I've got my extension which is on the socket to which that nut is taped to. If I go down here, you can see that I'm just threading it on. And you can see I've got my socket on that 12 millimeter nut and I'm just going to tighten it down. Now I'm going to catch the lower alternator bolt in the front here. And now I'm going to go ahead and tighten down this 14 millimeter bolt on the top. And then I'm going to tighten down the lower 14 millimeter bolt for the alternator. Now over at the side of the alternator, we have this 10 millimeter bolt that holds that bracket over there that secures the wire harness. And here I've got my ratcheting wrench tightening up this 10 millimeter bolt. Next thing we need to do is plug in this electrical connector for the voltage regulator and engine warning light. Make sure that's nice and secure. So next I'm going to attach the large positive cable to the alternator and then I'm going to come in with my brother's magnet and put that nut on there and just thread it on and then I can tighten up that 10 millimeter nut. So now the alternator is secured from the back it's time to put the front half of the engine together. I'm going to replace the idler pulley next and we'll just snug that down nice and tight. Now that pulley looks like it could use some replacing. Now I've got a brand new belt from Gates I'm going to go ahead and install that starting with the crank pulley. So I've got my breaker bar on the tensioner and I'm just going to pull it down while I thread the belt onto the water pump over here on this side and onto the tensioner pulley over here and I can release the tensioner. Now I'm going to start replacing all the other parts on the front end here including the cover for the ECU and I'm going to replace the air intake duct and finally we're going to replace the cooling reservoir. Now I'm also going to be replacing the battery so that I don't have any issues with my charging system anymore. And we're just going to lift out that battery. And we're in with the new battery. Alright, so everything is all buttoned down and installed. we got a new belt, a new alternator, and a new battery on there. Let's see if it's going to start up. Finally, we're going to check the charging voltage. And it's reading 14.2 volts, which is exactly the voltage I want it to be for the alternator to charge the battery. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one. If you've done everything right, you should be only left with one broken bolt.